Today's movie is basically the weirdest Enigma video ever. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Mariano Bano's cosmic horror flick, Dark Waters. Released in 1993, Dark Waters has the distinction of being the first western film shot in the Ukraine after the fall of the Soviet Union. It's a film that sort of epitomizes that late 80s, early 90s trend of shooting low-budget horror films in Eastern European countries. That trend basically started with subspecies, but Dark Waters is probably the best film from that era. But is Dark Waters splattery enough to earn five barf bags? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is brought to you by patrons Mike Pinder, Brad D, and Mad Hat Raven Desk. If you'd like to sponsor some videos, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on some random person solving this puzzle. And really, there are a few things in life as satisfying as putting that last piece of the puzzle in place. Then we jump over to this cliff. It looks like this year's crop of nuns are finally blooming. From there, we head inside. I don't want to wax poetic, but these candle shots are pretty hot. And to keep the randomness going, our next scene finds this priest hard at work reading from the Necronomicon. Klaatu, Verata, Nyctos… wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. Meanwhile, this nun is busy putting the finishing touches on her Flavor Flav cosplay. Well, it's no giant clock, but I guess it'll work. Will all these movies converge at some point? Or is this gonna be like James Joyce's Ulysses? It's wild, the Vatican has all this money, but they can't fix these leaks. This priest is like, Jesus, can we get a roofer in here? Oh, sorry, not you, Jesus. But say what you will, at least their cups runneth over. Oh man, you're getting the Necronomicon wet. If you feed it after midnight, we're really screwed. Wait, that's gremlins. Turns out the leaky roof is the least of their worries. This place is now just basically the water temple from every Legend of Zelda game ever. After the Great Flood, we see where Sister Flav wrote the lyrics for Welcome to the Communion Drome. Somehow she survived, and now she's doing her best Zeppelin cover and climbing this stairway to heaven. When she arrives at the top, she decides this is a good time to practice her cliff diving. Too bad she's not alone. Oh great, Kandarian demons. Wait, hold on. No, no, not that way. Man, getting around these rocks is a real pain in the ass. She gets shoved off and not even the Ukrainian judge can give this anything higher than a two. And she smashes on the rocks. <laughs> yes, she wasn't the flying nun after all. Back underground, man, this movie sure does love to jump around. These nuns are on their way to make cameos in Fulci's Demonia. But first, they gotta stash the pieces of that weird giant medallion in these little boxes. Aww, they're like rock coffins. That's adorable. I gotta say, Sister Chong really does have a million hiding spots for her Maui Wowie. And now we're headed back to the future. Here we're on a bus with this lady. She is like, great, of all the buses in the Ukraine, I wind up on the same one as the cast of Todd Browning's Freaks. I will say there really is something atmospheric about all of the late 80s slash early 90s low budget films they shot in Eastern Europe. They have a beautifully creepy vibe to them and Dark Waters is no exception. This whole movie looks like it was shot through an Instagram filter. After that, we jump over here for a live look at me draw a map so I don't get lost in Metroid. I need double jump to get here. I guess she found a hidden passage on the map because next thing you know she's breaking down the walls like she's Chris Jericho. Back on the bus, it looks like they're driving past Ukrainian Burning Man. Whatever these guys are doing, it's pretty lit. Meanwhile, over at the cloister, our explorers basically just wandered into the descent. Even further below, the sisters have started their very own Devo cover band. If you offend your god, you must whip it. With the nuns distracted, our explorer decides this is as good a time as any to raid their stash box. Oh yeah, they're gonna call me Moses after I burn this kush. Too bad for her, these sisters aren't into Sharon. Ah! Then we jump over here to art class. Man, these Bob Ross paintings have gotten kinda dark. We're just gonna add some happy little blood trails. 
And over in our other movie, the bus ride is still happening. I hope she arrives at the main plot before the movie's over. I mean, I guess at least she's getting closer. Inside, she's like, that's not J and B, so the best I can offer is nine bucks. Oh look, Bus Girl finally made it to the movie. And she's cosplaying the killer from Don't Look Now, apparently. And really, this guy looks sort of like a grizzled budget Donald Sutherland if you squint. Look, I just need a place to crash until I get to the main plot. No matter what she offers, he's not willing to take her to the island. Come back next week. Next week? They'll be done with principal photography by then. Don't you know how fast they crank out these low budget movies? With that guy at dead end, she heads out and runs into the killer from I Know What You Did Last Summer, who's not only willing to take her to the island, but also clearly an existentialist. I'm not scared of that. Man, Paddington 3 is taking a mature turn. Oh wait, it's just budget Rutger Hauer. Hold on, it's raining, there's Rutger Hauer. Is this the split second sequel I've been waiting decades for? Yeah, because this movie wasn't random enough, here's this. <laughs> Honestly, Smeagol was weird looking even before he became Gollum. Back on shore, we check in with the Purple Haze, who's getting ready to cut a promo with Kevin Sullivan. That's a deep cut joke for my fellow wrestling nerds. Meanwhile, over on the Iron Islands, Yara Greyjoy returns from plundering the Seven Kingdoms. Nowadays it's all electric light bulbs. Put a coin in, press a button, and pronto up it flashes. That's a funny soliloquy. I taught the Amish about the wonders of electricity in the exact same way. Then we get some exposition. Is she living in London now? She died giving birth to me. Afterwards, Elizabeth gets summoned to see Mother Superior. She's probably just gonna beat her with a ruler for smoking in the convent. Clearly, the healthcare benefits package at this place is lacking. There's some crazy cataracts. Elizabeth's like, I heard you wanted to see me? Oh wait, that was awkward. Look, the atmosphere in Dark Waters is off the charts, but does anything ever happen? This is all sizzle, no steak so far. Like that nun, I can't really see what all the fuss is about. Then it's time for an acting showdown. Who can emote the least in this scene? Elizabeth or Sister Natasha? Place your bets now. We didn't think you would make it tonight. I like to keep my appointments. <laughs> it's like she's looking off screen for her line. Well, as you know, my father died last October and left me everything. And here comes some more exposition. This is about as exciting as lunch with my retirement planner. And that includes a commitment on my part to continue with the regular payments my father made to this convent for the past 20 years. Sometimes secrecy is a blessing. We are a very secretive order, Elizabeth. I don't want to alarm anyone, but I don't think English is her first language. We don't allow the corruption of outside world. I mean, I guess it's good something is getting mangled in this movie, even if it's just my mother tongue. At any rate, she really needs to work on her enunciation. Unfortunately, there are things which are not sold by prey alone. I think Natasha Fatal has gone undercover at this convent to find Rocky and Bullwinkle. I <laughs> bet Boris is lurking around as a priest. Afterwards, Elizabeth settles in for sleep and she has this weird dream. I guess they spent this whole movie's budget on candles, basically. I mean, I know why they shot this movie in the Ukraine. The fire marshal would have shut this shit down in America. Football practice. Back in the catacombs, these nuns are wandering around. They must be Roman Catholics. Over in the library, Elizabeth consults the script. No wonder this movie isn't going anywhere. The screenplay is gibberish. Later, she finds this book of Bathory lyrics. And they shall make an image of the beast. For the whole of the image shall make the beast ascend out of the bottomless pit. Then she finds the tunnels. I bet Stefano Demera is holding Marlena hostage down here. Do you kids even remember Stefano Demera? Christ, I'm old. Yeah, if she keeps wandering around down here, she's going to find David Bowie in a codpiece sooner or later. After some more exploring, she decides to drop in on the purple haze. <laughs> He's got her in a corner like her name is Baby, but Elizabeth backs right into this jump scare. Oh, it's just Sarah. But this feels like a good time for some exposition. Who are they? The nuns, they killed Teresa. I'd like to say that I, for one, am sure glad we slowed things down for more whispered dialogue. I mean, for a second there, I almost thought something was going to happen. After a bunch of jibber jabber, they wander around and find this painting. Well, these nuns stole all my clothes and belongings, so I guess I'm entitled to steal this artwork. I can see why they didn't use this script for Ocean's 12. 
except before Elizabeth can complete the heist, she gets busted. She almost got away with it. Too bad she choked at the last minute. Seriously, this sister isn't putting up with any of Elizabeth's nonsense. Stealing. It's a sin, kids, and sinners must be punished. During their struggle, they end up at this window. You must be in the hayloft from Friday the 13th Part 3. And if you're keeping score at home, that's two sisters in this movie who are not the flying nun. We didn't get any gore there, but at least something happened. So, of course, this means it's time for more jibber jabber. I wasn't born there. I was born on this island, Sarah. If you guess this exposition is going to be important later, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. Then this happens. Man, if this were a Joe D'Amato nunsploitation flick, I'd know exactly where this was headed. Later that night, she wakes up and finds herself in Dark Souls. I think the Starks are buried down here. Oh Christ, it's those weird twins from The Shining. Run! But wait, it's gonna get worse. This crucified nun shows up and sounds like Benning's in The Thing. But it's all a dream. Football practice! The next morning, it's time for more exploring. I hope maybe she finds the exciting plot I was promised. Wait, hold the phone. It looks like she just wandered into hostel. Oh, never mind. It's just time for more talking. I just wanted to know the boat which just left. Was it going to the mainland? What <laughs> I'd give for a house establishing shot right about now. Do you have a telephone? A radio? No, but we've got some old walkie talkies in the back. How about those? After striking out, she decides she'd like to rifle through the mail. This guy's like, that's a federal offense, you know. And she's like, tell it to my friend George Washington. I'm really starting to think they might have spiked everyone's drink with Prozac before each day's shooting. No one in this movie can emote. No. Sorry, lady. No, I thought so. Thanks anyway. On the way back to the convent, she runs into this lady. So, what do you think of my Cthulhu cross stitch? I'll let you have it for ten bucks. And really, I had no idea there were so many Iron Maiden fans on the island. No, no, you screwed it up. Start over. This really is riveting. No one will be seated during Dark Water's terrifying cross-stitch scene. And then she reads the letter. Oh, hey, remember that weird amulet from the start of the movie? Turns out it's still in this movie. Someone or something is trying to put the amulet together again. Afterwards, she heads for a nice walk on the beach. Damn it, red tide again? Honestly, all these dead fish on the beach is probably just a red herring. But at least the sushi is fresh. <laughs> Thrill as Elizabeth realizes she's not a pescatarian. Yep, this is how my stomach sounds after Taco Bell. Of course, this is when Sarah shows up. Don't come in here, I just destroyed this bathroom. Then we cut to this Marilyn Manson video. Hey, finally, some gore. Well, if you blink, you'll miss it, but I'll take what I can get at this point. Back in the present, the blind lady left Elizabeth her Cthulhu cross stitch. Man, the Etsy sellers go above and beyond on this island. And if you guessed there was more jibber jabber coming, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. On today's episode of Fixer Upper, we'll be taking this crumbling Ukrainian beach house and turning it into a cabana for Cthulhu cultists. Turns out the work doesn't really have to be that fancy because the owner is blind. Your hair's changed, Anochka. And here's some more exposition. Elizabeth's mom is still alive. You said she's dead. She would be if she ever been born. Oh, so she's like Schrodinger's mother. I feel like we're finally getting somewhere with the plot, but that's interrupted when this nun shows up to start the Reno demo early. Yeah, I guess burning it to the ground and starting from scratch is probably the way to go. And none arsonists. I can safely check that off my list of shit I'd never thought I'd see in a movie. The Blind Lady is basically a Bruce Springsteen song at this point. And if you ordered your old blind Ukrainian woman, well done, I think your order is up. I'm also starting to think that maybe the Cthulhu cross stitch is in the movie because they didn't have a budget to make an actual monster. At any rate, the demo is going great. Also, I know this movie is a slow burn, but this feels pretty on the nose. Back underground, Sarah's trying to break into the stash box, but Sister Mary Jane's not having it. 
What a backstabber. And after a bloody king's moot, this sister has won the salt throne, but she's dead. Talk about a conundrum. Back in the catacombs, Elizabeth finds the Cthulhu face piece. Blind Mother Superior, meanwhile, has taken up finger painting. She's pretty good. Look, I don't even know if this plot breakdown makes sense. Barely know what's going on in this movie, and I've seen it multiple times. It's not so much a narrative as a vibe. The nuns, meanwhile, are heading toward this locked door. Must be a Balrog behind it because none shall pass. Over in the convent, Sister Mary Jane's on a killing spree. Have you been trying to steal my herb? After some tussling, Elizabeth has her in the front mount and is pummeling her. Will Sister Mary Jane tap out? This is for beating me with a ruler. And now we're coming to Dark Water's big reveal. They're running a secret nursery down there. <coughs> oh wait, it's that Elizabeth and Sarah are actually sisters. I've been waiting for you. Sister. And in keeping with Dark Water's overarching cinematic motif, we're not getting an action-packed showdown, but just more jibber-jabber. I think it's madness. I think we should stop it. Sarah drops her robes like a bad habit. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly like that, you pervs. But this is what she looks like underneath. Her sister is a Kabali from Star Trek? That's cool, I guess. Then it's time for a flashback. And I guess this Elder God puppet is at least better looking than the alien at the end of Contamination. And then everything ties back to the beginning with young Elizabeth giving the nun the weird necklace thing. Elizabeth heads deeper into the catacombs to meet her true mother, but first she's got to stop and rip this nun's guts out. I can't show you that because YouTube will demonetize me, but it's pretty good. And the Ancient One is awake. This is the weirdest communion ceremony ever. But with the ceremony about to wrap up, Elizabeth has a change of heart and shatters the amulet again, and the cavern collapses. Or at least I think it collapses. I guess this is all they had the budget for. They probably blew the rest on candles. And there are a lot of dead sisters on the beach. Guess they all came out for a little nun in the sun. But there is one sister left to guard the island's terrible secret. Give yourself a screenwriter's credit if you guessed it's now Blind Elizabeth. For those who are blind shall see the true face of the beast. I guess she bleached her eyes so she didn't have to see herself in this movie. And that's Dark Waters. I first saw this movie when it hit VHS back in 93 or 94 and I really didn't care for it much. It's slow and the plot meanders around a lot. However, I've thought about it many times during the past 25 years. The imagery and atmosphere are impressive, even if the narrative isn't. As a cosmic horror film, it's pretty okay. The plot presentation is purposely obtuse, and it's pretty obvious how it will end from the start, but it hits all the notes you'd expect from these kind of stories. Bano nails the Lovecraftian vibe. Born from the union of human being and the mother of eternal sorrow. But does he nail the splatter? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Dark Waters is pretty light. We're treated to some stabbings, a disemboweling, a burning, some body parts, and the mutated Sarah. Unfortunately, the gore is an afterthought in this one. What is here is quality, but there's not enough on display to give Dark Waters anything more than a one barf bag rating. This isn't a sick flick, but if you like cosmic horror, it's well worth a look. If you'd like a Lovecraftian nightmare with bucket loads of splatter, then be sure to check out my review of The Void. You'll find a link here on the screen during my outtakes. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters. And now, let's get bloody. Holy mackerel, that scratchy voice. When she gets to the top, she decides this is a good time. When she gets to the top, no, but we. <clears throat> God damn it! But just as the. But just as the. Ooh, come on, come on, teleprompter, catch up. So, what do you think of my Cthulhu cross stretch? Cross stretch. My favorite hobby is cross stretch.